Now let's see what happens when we have an ionic bond. For this class, we identify the ionic bond by starting with either a metal or ammonium. So remember, ionic bonds are where one gives away its electrons, the other one takes electrons. So an ion is anything with a charge on it where it's gaining or losing electrons. We have something called a cation. Cations are positively charged ions. That means they've lost one electron or more. For example, we could look at sodium. It likes to lose one electron and it becomes a positively charged group. Or calcium, which has two valence electrons extra, it likes to lose two electrons and become a positive two charge. Those are both two forms of cations. Anions are negatively charged ions and those are the ones that have gained one or more electrons. An example of an anion might be something like chlorine, which has one spot left over ready to accept another electron, so it becomes negatively charged. Or something like oxygen, which again has two spots left over ready for accepting electrons, and that gets a negative two charge when it's done. In order to make an ionic bond, we need to have one of them that wants to give away the electrons and another one that wants to take electrons. And they have to be equivalent so that we have this one wants to give two, the other one has to be able to take two. If this one needs three, it has to have something that will give it three electrons. So we're going to see that on the next section, how we can make sure that they're balanced out. On the exam, I will not be asking you to write out these ionic bond Lewis dot structures, but they will help you tremendously for us to understand how these, how these compounds come together for writing names and formulas. So let's start with sodium and chlorine and how they come together. Sodium has one valence electron, so it looks like this, and chlorine has seven, so it looks like this, with its seven dots around it. That is what the atoms of sodium and chlorine look like. When they come together, we can see that sodium has one extra electron, and that chlorine needs one more electron. So if sodium gives its electron to chlorine, they'll both be satisfied. Sodium now has zero valence electrons, which actually is from its previous noble gas. It's going to look like it has eight valence electrons to it. And then chlorine now has the extra one, and it has its octet, so it has the correct number of electrons. So we now have the sodium ion with a positive charge and the chloride ion with its negative charge on it. We put them together and we write the formula as NaCl. Notice that I don't put the charges in the formula. So there's nothing there telling you, hey, I'm an ionic bond from the formula. How do I know it's an ionic bond? That is because it starts with sodium, which is a metal. That's our clue that we're doing an ionic bond. Now you try it with magnesium and sulfur. Pause the video for a moment. So magnesium has two valence electrons. Let's draw those two in. Sulfur has six valence electrons, so we draw those in. We see that it needs two more electrons to get to eight, because eight minus six is two. So we're going to see that magnesium is going to give up two electrons and donate them to sulfur. And so we end up with magnesium with a two plus charge and sulfur with all eight dots around it being a two negative charge. We put these together and the formula will be MGS because I had one magnesium, one sulfur, and they bonded perfectly matched up, so everything is satisfied. So now we're going to look at what happens if they don't match up. So here we have sodium, it has one dot. We have sulfur, which has six dots. Put our dots around it. We see that sodium wants to give away one electron, that's great. Sulfur wants to take two, that's a problem. So what happens is sodium goes out and finds another friend, another sodium, that wants to give away another electron so that the sulfur can have its eight and each of the sodiums goes down to zero valence electrons or really the one before it, so eight valence electrons. So what do we see from this formula? We see that there are two sodiums, one sulfur. So the formula will be Na2S. How do I know there's two for the sodium? We need it to balance so that the charges balance out. Let's so go ahead and try magnesium and chlorine and see what you get. Pause your video. 
So we know magnesium has two valence electrons. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, and so it only needs one. So we have one guy that wants to give away two electrons and only one that wants to take one. Chlorine goes and finds another partner, another chlorine, that would like to take an electron so that we end up with one magnesium giving an electron to each of the chlorides, which gives us magnesium with a two plus charge and two chloride ions, each with a negative charge for a total of two negative. When we put that together, we get our formula of MgCl2. For your exam, you will be asked to draw the Lewis structure of three different types. Number one, one of the monoatomic elements. Number two, one of the diatomic elements, probably oxygen or nitrogen, because I usually like to use the ones with double bonds and triple bonds. And number three, you will be asked to do one for a molecular compound, binary compound. That is going to be one of the five that I mentioned. You will get practice with other ones in your online homework, but one of those five will be on your exam, nothing else. And there will be no questions on the exam about the Lewis dot structure of ionic compounds. We'll be doing other stuff with it, but you won't be doing the Lewis dot structure.